your cardiologist has advised a coronary angiography. You are afraid, anxious, your family is worried. Your Google search went on till 2 a.m. but you still don't have the answer. You keep asking, Dr. Angiography karni hi padegi kya? And this is probably the most emotionally loaded sentence I hear in my clinic. Not because of the test, but because what people think follows after it. Doctor kisi ne bola hai, angiography unnecessary hoti hai, risky hoti hai, aur ek bar andar gaya to stand pakka. Let me reassure you, as a cardiologist, my hands don't work on autopilot. Also, let me be very clear and honest, not everyone needs an angiogram. But some people absolutely do. And confusing these two situations can either create unnecessary fear or unnecessary delay. Namaste and welcome back to Edgy Cardio Wise. I am Dr. Ramey Amonkar and in the next few minutes, I'll help you understand calmly and clearly when angiography is not required, when it is strongly recommended, when it becomes mandatory and whether angioplasty has to be done immediately and briefly where CT angiography fits in. So no fear, no drama, just clarity the way medicine should be. Let's start with a simple understanding of what a coronary angiogram is. Now think of your heart like a house. Now when something feels wrong in a house, you don't immediately break the walls, right? You first check the basics. Now ECG is like checking the electrical system. Are the lights flickering? Is there a short circuit somewhere? Echo is like checking the structure of the house. Now are the walls strong? Is the pump working well? Stress tests are like switching on all the appliances together. Washing machine, AC, geyser, all at once. If the house struggles under load, we know something may be wrong. But we still don't know where the problem is. Angiography is where we finally look at the plumbing. We actually see the pipes that supply blood to the heart and we see whether they are wide open, narrowed or blocked. A very important point here, heart attacks don't happen because of electrical problems. They don't happen because the walls are weak. They happen because blood flow through these pipes suddenly reduces or stops. Angiography is the only test that directly shows us this blood flow problem in real time. Now once a patient asked me, Dr. Angiography matlab heart ka full service? I told him nahi, inspection only. Repair ek alag decision hota hai. Angiography is just inspection. Angioplasty or surgery is repair only if required. An angiogram gives us the information helps us decide the safest plan and often reassures more than it allows. I often tell my patients the purpose of angiography is not to put something inside the heart. The purpose is to understand what is happening inside the heart. Sometimes that understanding leads to medicines, sometimes to lifestyle changes and sometimes yes to angioplasty but the first step is clarity. Let's start with the good news. You usually don't need an angiogram if your chest discomfort is clearly non-cardiac. Gas, acidity, muscle pain. Very common, right? So how do we suspect this? When the pain changes with position, improves after antacids, is sharp, pinpoint or reproducible when you press? See, not every chest pain is a heart attack. The second group is young, low risk individuals with normal basic tests. So no diabetes, no smoking, no family history, your ECG is normal, echo is normal. In such cases, doing an angiogram often adds more anxiety than answers. Now I've had patients who came in perfectly low risk, but after someone casually suggested an angiogram, they walked in terrified, not sick. So medicine is not about doing more tests, it's about doing the right test. The third group, when your stress test is normal and your symptoms are mild and stable. A good quality stress test done properly, supervised correctly, has strong reassurance value. Now think of it like this, if your heart performs well under controlled stress, there is usually no urgency to look inside immediately. Stress tests are not perfect, but a normal test in the right patient is meaningful. And finally, the fourth and very important, if you had an angiogram earlier, it was clean and nothing had changed in your symptoms, just repeating an angiogram casually makes no sense. See, angiography is not a routine full body checkup of the heart. So remember, not needing an angiogram does not mean your symptoms are imaginary. It means your doctor is choosing judgment over panic. Now let's talk about the situations where my thinking changes, where I don't rush, but I also don't ignore. Now let's understand when I start leaning towards angiogram. First is typical angina, chest heaviness, pressure, discomfort that comes on with walking, climbing stairs or exertion and settles with rest. Now this pattern is very important. It tells us something very specific. 
the heart muscle is not getting enough blood when the demand is rising. Now, once a patient told me, Dr. Ghar pe sab thik hai, lekin jab station ke steps chadta hoon, chest bhari ho jata hai. Now, this is not the symptom to be ignored. This is the heart asking for attention. The second situation is an abnormal stress test, especially when it shows significant ischemia, early changes and changes in multiple ECG leads. A stress test is like a warning signal. It tells us something may be wrong, but it does not tell us exactly where, how severe or how many arteries are involved. That's why I often explain it like this to my patients. A stress test is a screening test. Angiography is the confirmation. The one doesn't replace the other, they actually complement each other. The third group is high risk patients. Patients with diabetes, long standing hypertension, smoking history, strong family history of heart disease. Now in these patients, symptoms can be misleadingly mild, but disease can be severe. Diabetes especially can blunt pain signals. So the heart may be suffering quietly. I've seen patients who said, doctor, jada dard nahi tha, but saans pool rahi thi. But their angiogram told a very different story. In high risk patients, we don't wait for dramatic pain. We respect the risk. So when symptoms follow a pattern, tests raise concern or risk is high, angiography becomes a tool of clarity and not fear. This part is very important because here delaying an angiogram is not being cautious. It can be dangerous. This is not the time to wait. The first situation is a heart attack or what we call as an acute coronary syndrome. Ongoing chest pain, ECG changes, rising cardiac enzymes. In this situation, angiography is not optional. Why? Because a heart attack means blood flow to the part of the heart as suddenly stopped. Every minute of delay means more heart muscle is lost. And heart muscle once lost does not regenerate. In a heart attack situation, I often tell families, ye test diagnosis ke liye nahi hai. Ye test zindagi bachane ke liye hai. The second situation is unstable angina. A chest pain at rest, pain coming more frequently, pain starting with minimal activity. I describe this to patients like, these are warning tremors before an earthquake. The artery is not fully blocked yet, but it's threatening to close. Now waiting here and hoping it settles can turn a warning into a heart attack. In this situation, angiography is not done because we panic, but because we respect the warning signs. The third situation is severe heart failure, when the heart's pumping power is reduced. See, sometimes the heart is not weak because it's old, but because it's starved of blood. In such cases, we must look at the arteries because treating heart failure without checking for blockages is like filling water in a leaking tank. Here, angiography is not overused. It is standard of care. This is the biggest fear. Let me be very honest with you. Angiography does not automatically mean angioplasty. In fact, a large number of angiograms end without any stent at all. Many patients walk out with medical management, lifestyle changes, just medicines, and that is good medicine. Even where blockages are found, not all blockages behave the same. Some are mild to moderate, they're stable for years. Now, these blockages may look worrying on a picture, but do not always reduce flow significantly. In such cases, medicines plus lifestyle can work just as well and sometimes even better. Angioplasty is done when the blockage is significant, symptoms are limiting daily life and the benefits clearly outweigh the risks. In heart attacks, immediately, in unstable cases, urgently and in stable disease, thoughtfully. Except in emergencies, angioplasty is not rushed. It is discussed, explained and planned. So remember, angiography is about knowing, angioplasty is about deciding. And good cardiology is knowing when to do what and when not to. Now comes the very important question. Does angioplasty have to be done immediately? Do I have time? See, except during a heart attack, most angioplasties are not emergencies. Many times the sequence looks like angiogram today, discussion tomorrow, and then angioplasty later. And that is completely appropriate medicine. In stable heart disease, the blockage has usually developed slowly over years. The body forms, natural bypass channels, and blood flow is usually not suddenly cut off. And that's why in stable cases, taking time to understand options does not increase your risk. In fact, rushed decisions often increase anxiety, not safety. Patients often ask me, Doctor, I can think a I usually smile and say, if you can buy a phone research kar sakte, to heart procedure se pehle sochna to banta hai. See, medicine is not a race, it's a decision. And once the need to intervene is clear and justified, the angioplasty can usually be performed safely in the same setting through the same access. But a decision must be right, not rushed. 
Just remember, this applies to stable cases only. In heart attacks or unstable symptoms, waiting is dangerous. And that's why understanding which category you are in matters. Good heart care is not about speed, it's about clarity, timing and judgment. By now, some of you might be thinking, Doctor, what about CT angiography? See, CT angiography is actually a very good non-invasive test when used for the right patient. It works especially well in low to intermediate risk individuals when we want to rule out significant disease, or when we need anatomical clarity without inserting the catheter. Now, think of it uh, as a high resolution roadmap of your heart arteries taken from outside the body. For many patients, a normal CT angiogram is extremely reassuring. But like every test, CT angiography has its limitations. It is not ideal when calcium in arteries is very high during an acute heart attack when immediate treatment is needed. And that's why CT angiography does not replace cath lab angiography in emergencies. Remember, CT angiography is not a lighter version of angiography and it's not a replacement either. It's a different tool for a different question in a different situation. Now, I'll be doing a separate detailed video on CT angiography explaining exactly who should consider it and who should not. Because in heart care, the safest test is not the newest one, it's the right one. So, remember this, not everyone needs angiography, but some people definitely do. Fear-based decisions are bad medicine, but delay-based decisions can be even worse. The goal is not to avoid angiography, the goal is to do the right test at the right time for the right patient. I often tell my patients, good cardiology is not about doing more procedures, it's about knowing when to stop and when not to wait. And that judgment comes from understanding, not from panic or pressure. If you have been advised an angiogram and you are confused, ask questions, understand the reason and take informed decisions. And that is your right as a patient. If this video helped you understand angiography better, like it, share it, especially with someone who is anxious and subscribe to EduCardioWise. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about many things, CT angiography in detail, when stents really help and when they don't, tests that can predict heart attacks early and many more. Until then, take care of your heart before it demands attention. Goodbye.